We're going to take a little look at how we solve Newton's laws problems in two dimensions. Specifically, we're going to look at a ramp problem because solving a problem where a force is pulling at an angle is pretty straightforward if uh, we still have something moving along a horizontal or vertical direction. Uh, we'll know we've got this when we can solve problems looking at these ramps, which are kind of the most complicated problems that we tend to look at. Um, you're probably gonna to wanna to follow along in your unit two packet here. I'm gonna solve uh, practice problem number two. Practice problem number one uh, is also available. If you want to look at that one, you can look at the solutions that are posted. Um, I would try that one as well. It's a little more straightforward. X and Y are what you would expect them to be. So this uh, example problem is an object rolling down a ramp, a cart at rest on a ramp. So this is a very common problem that we talk about. Uh, in fact, we did a demo of two carts rolling down a ramp and we saw that the mass didn't make a difference. So we kind of want to get back to that idea as we go. So how far is, fast is the cart going at the bottom is the question. That seems like a kinematics question, but in order to do that, we would need to know quite a few things. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by finding the net force finding then the acceleration and then using acceleration and our kinematics relationships to answer the question. Um, so we start with what forces are acting on this cart. And of course, we tend to start with the force of gravity. Um, we are also on a surface, so there would be a normal force. Uh, I have drawn this right on top of the picture to kind of give us a sense of what's going on. You don't have to, you could draw this somewhere else. But Understanding the orientation of the normal force and the force of gravity here can really be helpful. Um, we know that the force of gravity, since it's a one kilogram cart, is about 10 newtons. I've used 9.8 here. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So before we go any further and try to find the normal force, we want to ask ourselves, what is our coordinate system? Where's the origin? What's the positive x, the positive y? Um, you could start with up is positive y, to the right is positive x. But if you do that, then the cart's motion is actually in two dimensions. It is moving both down and to the right. But what we can do is we can shift our coordinate system and do it so that we take our two-dimensional problem and it actually becomes a one-dimensional problem, uh, which simplifies things quite a bit. So what does that look like? Well, we tilt our coordinate system. So our coordinate system has y, perpendicular to the ramp and x parallel to the ramp. So the cart is just traveling in the x direction and the normal force, a force we don't know what it is, is the thing in the y direction. Um, do any of these forces have components? Well, now that we've changed it up, we can say that the force of gravity has the components and that one is in many ways better because we know what the force of gravity is. We've already calculated it and we can figure out from geometry its components. Um, so how do we calculate these components? Well, um, you start with drawing this triangle that I've drawn, the right triangle that sort of has down and a law or per parallel to the normal force, so perpendicular to the ramp and along the ramp as our two directions. I'm going to call FGY the component that's kind of opposite the normal force and FGX the component that is parallel to the ramp because of our coordinate system that we drew. Um, the angle we care about is a 30 degree angle. You can hopefully convince yourself that that angle is 30 degrees by doing some um, geometric arguments. But if that is true, then the X component, the component along the ramp is FG sine theta, or in this case, uh, 9.8 Newtons times the sine of 30 degrees, which gives us about five Newtons. Uh, we can also find the Y component, which is about 8.5 Newtons. We don't really need that right now, um, but we can certainly calculate. So which of these forces is bigger? This is kind of an interesting question. The force of gravity or the normal force? Well, um, the force of gravity is 9.8 Newtons. The normal force needs to be as big as it has to be to make everything work. And the force of gravity is bigger than the normal force because the normal force must be equal to a component of the force of gravity, right? Fn and Fgy have to balance each other out. Otherwise the cart will be flying off the ramp or tunneling down into the ramp, neither of which makes any sense. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and apply Newton's laws to the y-axis. Um, is it a first or second law situation? Well, perpendicular to the ramp, it's a first law situation because the cart is not going along the y direction. It's only going in the x, which means the net force in the y is zero. 
normal force minus the force of gravity and the y equals zero, which means those two are equal to each other and equal to about eight and a half newtons. Um, slightly different if you used 10 for little g. Now we can do the x-axis, and this is the one where we actually get most of our information, right? Uh, for the x-axis direction, this is a second law situation. We are accelerating, the cart is accelerating down the ramp. Net force in the x equals uh, ma. A is the thing we're looking for. Fgx is already solved. That is our net force divided by the mass, giving us about 4.9, about 5 meters per second squared. Now we can solve the kinematics problem. How fast is the cart going at the bottom? Well, um, if the ramp is five meters long, the acceleration is down the ramp. Uh, we don't know T, so we're going to use our fourth equation. V final squared is V initial squared plus 2A uh, delta X. But in this case, we'll call initial X zero. Um, the initial velocity is also zero. The final velocity then is the square root of 2A distance traveled. And we get about 7 meters per second. Um, so on a ramp, there's a couple of interesting things that we can think about. The normal force is going to be less than the force of gravity because it's equal to just a component. We tilt the axes. We don't move the force of gravity. And this is important, right? Uh, you might argue, what's the difference between just tilting my problem so, you know, the ramp is horizontal. Well, in this case, the force of gravity is a physical force. So its direction has meaning in the physical world, not just in a theoretical sense. So we want to tilt the axis. The location of the ramp angle in the vector uh, triangle, notice the ramp angle is 30 degrees, is down at the tip of the angle, sort of over here. And that angle corresponds to this angle in our vector diagram. So the sine and the cosine are reversed from what we normally see. So those two angles end up being the same. All right, uh, we can do a little bit of a proof of this using some geometry, right? We can say that the angle between FGY and the surface ramp is 90 degrees. Um, that's FGY, that has to be theta, theta minus 90, you get the idea, okay? All right, the last piece is to consider something that is related to our two different carts going down the ramp we did in class. But if a child on a snow tube, mass of M, and a toboggan full of LHS seniors, 20 M for their mass, both start from rest on the top of an icy frictionless slope. Now, of course, ice is not perfectly frictionless, but if it were, um, we could solve this problem. And the question is, who would get to the bottom first, the child, the group of seniors, or would it be a tie? Now, if this is anything like the situation we saw in class with the two carts, we would expect that you would have a tie, right? That all of these seniors, assuming that we're measuring the back of the thing where they both start together, shouldn't be affected. So why would that be true? Um, we can use what we've just learned, right? About ramp problems and kind of solve this symbolically, right? The same free body diagram, FGX, FGY, the normal force and the FGY being in the y direction, the FGX component being along the direction of the ramp, we can say the net force in the x is ma in the x direction. Uh, acceleration is that FGX divided by m. We already know that that FGX is the force of gravity mg times the sine of the angle of the ramp. And if we divide through by the mass, we find out that the acceleration is just g sine theta. Again, this is without friction. Um, we can talk about that when we add friction in later. But for a frictionless ramp or a low friction scenario where friction can be ignored, like our two carts on the ramp, the acceleration down a ramp is g sine theta, and we don't care about the mass. So uh, when we're solving one-dimensional dynamics problems, these are still actually one-dimensional, even though um, it's technically two dimensions. If you orient your axis the right way, you can often get a single dimension for each law, which is really what we want. Uh, it causes everything to be much simpler. Draw the free body diagrams, calculate forces and components, state and apply your various laws and the two axes separately, X and Y. Find acceleration and apply kinematics. Be careful about your signs, what's positive, what's negative, um, but, be, but do that as needed. And then double check, does everything make 
sense. All right, so that's the end of this video. Um, if you go and look at the slides that this came from, there's a couple more example problems in there that you can look at as well. Um, good luck. Thanks for watching.